Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for tuning in to this session about deploying and managing your hyperconverged S2D solution with Virtual Machine Manager. My name is uh, Jan Tode Pedersen, JT for short, and I will through this session try to give you a brief overview of how to manage and deploy an S2D cluster with Virtual Machine Manager. I'm a senior consultant at uh, CT Global here in Norway, where I mainly focus on Story Spaces Direct, direct Hyper-V, System Center products, uh, Software Defined Data Center, Azure, and Azure Stack. And I also do other uh, Microsoft on prem so solutions. I also have a blog at jtpeterson.com, and you can also reach me on Twitter at jantulepia. Uh, lately, I've also uh, gotten involved with the System Center user group here in Norway. I will, ho I will host events focusing on the System Center data center products like VMM, Operations Manager, and other, other uh, parts of System Center. In this session, uh, we will cover a few things like um, how to build the host group structure, uh, define basic Runas accounts, create a library share structure, how to create and define logical networks with uh, VM networks, how you create a switch config with port profiles, how you can leverage a basic bare metal deployment of hosts in an easy way, I will also show you a few things about templates and VMM cloud benefits. Uh, we will not cover how to build the Virtual Machine Manager, how to configure it, and how to set it up. Uh, that's pretty simple steps. And I will also show you a little bit of how not to configure at the configuration inside of Virtual Machine Manager. With that, let's have a look at some bad examples. One of the biggest issues people have with VMM is that they configure it wrong in some way, or just don't understand how to um, how to do the configuration or how VMM actually works. Um, VMM can sometimes feel like configuring Config Manager for the first time. Uh, even though it's, I think, basically, well, I think that Config Manager is way harder than VMM to learn. Um, with any product, there are several ways that lead to something that works. But some might be more difficult and more complex. The main idea is to make VMM Config as simple as possible, so that anyone that logs on to a VMM console can understand how you have or somebody else has configured it and how they can use it. Uh, one of the main problems people have is that they build a flat um, host group structure with no sub host groups. This is a fine approach if you have a few uh, if you have a few Hyper-V hosts or maybe one Hyper-V host standalone and one cluster. But as soon as you start getting uh, more hosts and more clusters, and let's say you have different locations, different sites, uh, or you have racks, you, you have multiple racks with multiple clusters, this starts getting a little bit complicated. And, and I will show you why later on it is kind of important to build a proper host structure. Uh, especially when it comes to logical networks and logical switches, this will become more and more clear. Another issue people have is that they build their or create their logical networks wrong. A lot of people create a single uh, logical network with a single uh, network site inside the logical network and place all their VLANs inside that single network site. This will make it hard to distinguish between uh, the different VLANs, what they are, and you will need to know that VLAN 10 is management, 
VLAN 12 is, let's say, DM set VLAN 13 is is a public IP address or something like that. So, with that, let's uh, head over to the demos and uh, look at. Uh, well, head over to my virtual machine manager setup and see how that that looks like. So, when you log in to any virtual machine manager, you basically get the basic input and you see a single host structure. So, like I said, one of the important things inside here is to build a a structure that represents your um, your structure. If it's one data center, if you have multiple racks, if you have fabric hosts uh, that runs your fabric servers like domain controllers, RDS farms, uh, certificate servers, any kind of uh, fabric virtual machine that you need to run for have a fa fabric uh, domain running. And that is actually a recommendation as well to have a separate fabric domain to run your um, Hyper-V environment in. Um, I've chosen to, to build a sort of structure here to show you a little bit of how um, of how uh, I we build or how I build uh, the, the the structure. So I've separated this into S2D, and you don't really need to do this. You can put the DC one on top, the data center one. Then you have a host group for fabric hosts and a host group for infrastructure hosts. And then you say, okay, well, I have a fabric host in rack one, which I've named this. I also have infrastructure hosts called in rack one as well. And I name my, I name a host group for my clusters. If you have multiple clusters, you would have multiple uh, host groups with those with the different cluster names, then put the cluster inside there. And if you have multiple racks as well, you'll just move it in there. And then the same with the data, if you have a data center two or an office location or whatever, and then you can basically um, build that um, in there and then place the virtual machine, the, the physical hosts in those lo locations. And that way you'll also have an easy way of, if you have a problem, you can easily just scroll into that um, that uh, host group and see what virtual machines you, you have inside. Okay, so when you build one of the core foundations of when you build a virtual machine manager setup is to use run as accounts. And one of the the main um, the main uh, issues the main thing is you you need is a VMM administrative account, you'll need some local admins accounts, you'll need a, if you are doing bare metal deployment, you need some uh, bare metal deployment logins. And one of the other things you should have is a um, domain join account. So you'll put in a domain join. Now I'm using, this is a lab environment, so I'm using domain admin as the domain join account. Um, so create a domain uh, join account that you'll use for domain joining either virtual machines or physical machines. And you can create, if you have multiple domains, create one runners account per domain. This will make it a lot easier when you're deploying virtual machines or physical hosts in the different uh, domains. And if you're a hoster, this will be a lot, e lot if you have a hundred clients with 100 domains, this will be an easy thing to have and you don't have to remember the password every single time you basically uh, join, a, join a computer to the domain. So when it comes to library shares, um, one of the important things here is to build a, a structure where you can, where you understand where things are and that you place uh, different things in different folders. For instance, you have an ISO folder where you place all your um, ISOs for if you need to mount an ISO. 
If you have any any answer files you use during deployment, you use these. Uh, you create that as well. If you do do bare metal de deployments, create a driver structure where you place the drivers for the different hardware you you use, and then put it underneath with. Um, you can either use like a folder structure with um, um, with um, with dates on when the drivers were updated, and then you can have a tools folder as well for your PowerShell scripts, and then also have folders to to store your VHDX v, VHD or VHDX files for your templates and bare metal deployment files. Uh, and we will go through a few of the other things here uh, a little bit late, later on. So let's head back to the fabric and let's have a look at uh, logical networks. So one of the things I showed you was, um, was how that some people create a client logical network where they put all their virtual, all their VLANs into one uh, network site. And this is actually not a very good idea. Uh, like, like I said, it, it makes you, it's easy to forget what a VLAN number, what uh, each VLAN number is. So you have to have a list of the different VLANs and then you have to put, then they have to um, search for them every, every single time. Um, what I normally do is I create logical networks and inside each logical networks, I create uh, multiple network sites inside. So let's say you have clients uh, and they basically, you have a client where they have application subnets, they have web subnets, they have DM set subnets. So you create separate uh, network sites inside each logical network. And then you define the VLAN tag and the IP subnet of these uh, networks. So it's easier for you to understand which VLAN is what. And then the, the, the really good thing about this is, and this is the reason why we create host groups, is that you can actually assign the network site to a specific host group. So let's see that this tenant one application is only allowed in uh, data center one and not data center two. Let's say you want to create another one, tenant one, and then you call this DC two um, DC two applications. Then you create a new uh, VLAN here. It could be the same VLAN. So let's say it's 651, but it's another subnet. So the subnet here was 192.168. But in data center 2, the subnet is 100, and it starts that. So basically, what you then do is you say, okay, hey, this is supposed to be in the infrastructure on DC2, that means that this subnet is only available in data center two and not data center one, which then makes it a lot more easier for you to, to uh, when you have virtual machines in the different data centers, to not have too many uh, virtual networks to, to decide between. So when I apply this then, it creates one. And the same applies to uh, Hyper-V as well, and Hyper-V hosts. Uh, so you can actually, in the Hyper-V management, you can create uh, network sites for the different uh, data centers. So for instance, this network site is only in data center one. So that means when I deploy a, a physical host, it will automatically pick an IP, if, if you choose it to use IP pools, it will aut automatically pick an IP address from that subnet that you've defined here, and only in when you deploy it into data center two. So if I want to do another one, so we can do Hyper-V management, and then let's call this DC2. And you create another one, this, this VLAN there is also 10, or it can be zero, depending on how you want to do it. But the subnet here is 10, 
that's 10 0 100 0 slash 24 on that and then that's only for data center 2 for hyper-v so now when you deploy a host as well you will have different subnets that will be available for that in that data center when you de deploy it to that host group and the same applies for storage interfaces uh, or storage sub subnets so i've created two here called rack one and rack two they have two different um, uh, subnets and two different vlans so for rack one it is in data center one it's only available on the infrastructure in rack one and rack two is only available in data center one rack two so that means when i bare metal deploy my hosts and do it to the rack one i will get ip addresses from this subnet if i deploy the host to rack two i would have gotten ip addresses from this subnet and the reason why we want to have different subnets for um, this for the hyper-v storage within the same data center is to limit um, broadcast or traffic on the same subnet to increase the speed so okay let's cancel that and then you can also create ip pools inside uh, here uh, so i've created a few ip pools and you just basically choose which uh, site it's supposed to be in which vlan and then uh, it'll choose it for you and then you create an ip range and then for this you don't need gateway or anything because it's a storage network for uh, the uh, s2d deployment and the same here it's a range and a gateway and dns's So let's have a look at the logical switches. Ah, sorry, forgot one thing. When you create a logical network, it doesn't create a VM network. So you have to do that up here. You can also do it, sorry, you can also do it here. You can create a VM network from here. So you can, and that's, that's for you to be, have it available when you deploy virtual machines. So you need to create a virtual network uh, for deploying virtual machines as well. So let's have a look at switch config. Before you can deploy a switch config, you need to create a port profile for that switch config. And what you can do is you can create several uh, port profiles for a logical switch. And what that will entail is you can define, you, you create a name, what kind of load balancing you want, what kind of teaming mode, and then you add the network that you want to have that is available uh, for that logical switch. And these are networks that are available in the different data centers or host groups that this is. So you need, you need to know that as well. So when we then go into the logical switch, so let's have a look at my S2D switch. Uh, it's a, a team embedded, meaning it's a set switch for uh, S2, S2D with RDMA capabilities. Uh, we create, uh, we put in some virtual ports. I also created a storage RDMA uh, virtual port. Uh, and I will show you what this actually does, the storage RDMA. Uh, in port profiles here, I've created a new uh, port profile for uh, a virtual port profile that has some settings. And what it does is it has an enabled remote direct memory access, RDMA for that so whenever you, whenever you use this uh, port profile for an interface it'll automatically enable rdma on those uh, virtual NICs. So let's have a look at this so i don't put any extensions on you have of course the virtual ports which are port classifications and then you have some uplinks so i've created uplinks here from the port profiles that was defined so if you look at this, uh, it has a uplink rack one, and it has the load balancing of dynamic switch in the independent. It also has the network sites that are available. And then I've defined a few um, a few virtual NICs for this. So I have the management virtual NIC, which is of course on VLAN 10. Uh, this is the NIC that I'll use, the, uh, use for management on the host. 
I've also chosen to use an IP pool, so it will, will automatically pick up an IP address. And I've also set the host management port profile on, on it. I've also created some uh, SMB uh, virtual NICs. Again, I'll, that's using the uh, Hyper-V storage uh, logical network, which is VLAN 50. I'm also using the IP pool. And then I'm choosing the storage RDMA classification. But the cool thing inside here is, as you can see, I have two um, uplink profiles inside. So what this does is, because of I've, I have a different um, subnets in here for SMB, it will choose a different IP address uh, for the subnet. Because in here, Hyper-V storage has a different uh, IP address range for uh, the uplink for this rack. So it will then choose JT rack 2 IP pool. And this means I can only, I only need to create one logical switch for S2D for any cluster in any location. You just need to add a new, just use an existing uplink profile that you already have, or you can create a new uh, uplink port profile in here. That, uh, that will have the networks inside that you've chosen for that. For that, so you can just call it JT uplink DC one DC two rack one, for instance. Then you choose the networks that are inside that um, inside um, that host group. So that makes it very easy when you deploy a um, when you deploy a physical host to that host group. It'll choose the, the, the correct uh, port, uh, sorry, logical networks. So let's have a look at uh, bare metal deployments. Uh, let's head over to the library and see if we can see if we have any physical library objects like a VHDX file, uh, which I have. I've, re I've created a um, VHDX file that I'll be using for a physical computer profile. So if you go in here, you can see that I have a physical computer profile to uh, deploy a physical host from. And I have named it. I've added the VHDX file. I've also set in some uh, settings for um, disk, uh, the size of the disk. Uh, and then I've added some driver tagging. So you can tag drivers if you want while deploying the uh, physical m machine. Also set some um, some OS configuration files for a local domain join account. I've set the local admin password. Uh, I've done a local um, a runners account for admin. You can add, also add the product key if you want, and you can add an answer file or add any post deployment scripts if you want. And then you can also add some security baselines if you need that. So let's have a look at um, how we deploy a host. Uh, you can do it two ways. You can create a PowerShell script or you can do it manually. Let me show you the um, the VMM way of doing it to begin with. Um, you go in to add a resource then add a physical computer. Then you choose the runners account for the HP or for any BMC or IDRAC, ILO, whatever. And you use the IPMI uh, protocol which is port 623. And then you add the IP address. And then click Next. It will now start a deep discovery. It will boot up the um, physical machine. Uh, you, of course, you need to create, uh, specify which host you're using, uh, which host group, and then the physical computer pro profile, of course. Now we'll start doing the deep discovery. And it will. Um, boot up the, the physical machine into the IPMI, uh, sorry, into the Pixie boot. Uh, one thing that is very important when doing Pixie boot is to have the uh, primary network card and the switch port that is connected to this network card set to a default VLAN on that port so that when, when Pixie boot is working, it doesn't need to set a VLAN tag for the interface. If not, the Pixie will not work. So uh, this 
this will take a while. Now it's finished here, as I've cheated a bit. Um, depending on how fast your server is, um, it will take from anything from two to 10 minutes before uh, you get the information. As you can see here, I got some information about my server. It's a pretty old machine with a Xeon E5530 with a core count of eight. It has about 48 gigs of memory. It will show you the network card, which are, which are basic Broadcom cards, and it will show you the size of the disk. This is where the OS is supposed to be. So if I click Next here now, it will do a summarize of everything, and it will show you a script. Now, for you to create, um, for you to auto automate this, you can actually just create this script. Uh, or, so, sorry, you can get take this script out and then replace some of these information with uh, variables that you want to add. Um, I'll show you how I do it. This is a script we use at work, uh, which I cannot show you too much of. But um, what we've done is we've combined uh, the initial what you saw with some information. Then it does a few things here. Then it creates a few things. Sorry, the wrong script. Uh, and it does a few things, and you can actually add the physical um, network adapters into a logical switch and so on when you boot. And you can also add uh, physical network adapters after. And then you can do some post deployment of a script or something after. Um, now that you've uh, tried to deploy a physical host, I'll show you how to add a logical switch. And the thing about this is, is when you create a script to do them to do this, adding a logical switch here allows you to get the ah. so you can basically get the script as well for the um, for the um, for the uh, new logical switch. So when you create a deployment, you can basically just copy out the, the information you need and create a script. Sorry, this one. And then you can actually just add the logical switches after if you want. So anything you do with VMM, whatever it is, you can actually get the scripts out uh, and make your own automation scripts to deploy new hosts or create a virtual machine or create a, a physical profile computer profile, you can create port profiles, logical switches, logical networks, everything you, you can actually do by just clicking the um, clicking the uh, script. So if I do here now, it's just adding a new one, then you can see you actually get, uh, yeah, sorry. So 65, uh, 192.168.1.0.24. And then let's say, yeah. And then you can basically get the script you need to uh, to, to create it. So um, VMM is pretty nice. Um, just play with it uh, and, and build it, build it uh, kind of in a strict way so you don't bloat it out with all kinds of different things. Try to build it a bit constrained and then take out the scripts as you do things because they are really nice and really good to, uh, to, to, to use. So, okay, trying to get there. So thanks for joining. Uh, you can of course re um, read my blog. I will be creating a few posts about bare metal deployments and VMM in general in, in the next couple of months. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out at, on Twitter, or if you do Story Spaces Direct as well, uh, which is probably why you're here. So join us at the Story Spaces Direct channel at Slack. Then you can ask us uh, whatever you want. So thank you for joining, and I hope to see you again on my second session of, of the day. Thank you.